right, gents. So this is our opening battle. I'm just going to give you an overview of the campaign using first uh, what I will be reviewing shortly was the Warhammer General's Compendium. And so to spice things up a little bit, I picked one of the scenarios out of here, and actually I picked two, and merged them together. And so we are going to today be playing, and I think it's fitting given the, new, given the news coming out of GW about the uh, potential imminent demise, or I guess not coming out of GW, but the rumor, imminent demise of Beastmen, Bretonians, and Tomb Kings, among others. Uh, to play a game where two of them are facing off and then the third is kind of letting its will be known. So, decided to throw together kind of a combination of the Oasis is Ours and Battle Amid the Dunes. And what that means for this is, so we'll just say that the Bretonians and the Beastmen are going to meet up for a uh, engagement and then the Tomb Kings, who have heard that they're going to get hit with the, uh, the old squat treatment, have sent a, a, an evil chaos -y dust storm north. And essentially for the battle, what this means is we're just going to play at uh, victory points, but uh, the, the deployment's going to be unusual because we've both been overcome by dust, and then there's uh, a special rule. What is it called here? So, uh, sorry for the shaky camera. Uh, Dying of thirst. So on the beginning of uh, each turn, roll a d6 for every unit. If you roll a 1, you are dying of thirst, or your units are dying of thirst, and you take d6, drink 2 hits, no armor save. And because suddenly water is at such a shortage, we, uh, your soldiers are going to want to fight even harder. So when they're near uh, water, like that, and, and this, we're going to talk about this one a little bit more just to make things interesting. They are stubborn. And then uh, the uh, Kemrian kings have also sent north a sandstorm. And so kind of did this to balance uh, the two armies. We'll go into those more later. But uh, what that means is all missile weapons and war machines fire at half their normal range, and all shots are taken with a minus one penalty to hit, which will just be awesome with my already kind of crappy Bretonian bowman. Uh, but in addition, a uh, unit wishing to charge an enemy that is over half its charge distance away must take a leadership test in order to do so. Basically what that means is saying is they're afraid to charge into the sandstorm. And then also due to the, the, it says the book here, it says the blinding sands, any unit or model that breaks an enemy unit and wishes to pursue may do so, but rolls one less die than normal. So my Bretonians will roll 2d6 instead of... Uh, 3d6, and then just regular infantry models will just roll a d6. So that will kind of, I think, balance things out. Obviously, I have more shooting than he does. Uh, my Bretonian, or my Beastman opponent. So, uh, and then for this swamp here, uh, I'm going to say, just because I have a swamp and I have a regular pond over there, um, we're going to say that this water might be brackish. So the first time you get there, you roll a d6, not a 1. You don't get the stubborn rule, and you do suffer from dying of thirst rule because the water is brackish. Uh, and then if your units are touching, uh, I'll have to go back and look at the rule, that water, they don't suffer from that rule. And so to kind of balance it, because uh, you can see the deployment, I've already got it marked off here. There's this side, it's kind of a, you know, draw an unusual line across it. Uh, I put more terrain in this side to kind of break things up, whereas this one's a little bit more open. So we are going to roll off for sides, deploy, and do magic. And so I'll be back at just prior to the beginning of time. All right, so we have set up. Uh, my opponent won the roll to uh, pick sides, and he picked the side with the closest to the probably, or almost certainly, well, it is healthy pond, uh, leaving me with deploying on this side. So I'll go over my list first, and then we will talk about my uh, evil chaos East Man opponent. So I decided to go with the uh, Fae Enchantress. It's a 3,000 point battle, so it's a little low points for her, but I've never played her before. So she is in with a group of Grail Knights. Next to her is a uh, block of 11 Knights of the Realm with a level one damsel with beasts. Uh, next to them is another block of, or a block of 10 with my BSB and then another level one damsel of beasts. 
We've got 12 errant knights over here, 18 bowmen, five uh, Pegasus knights full command, one of my trebuchets. I don't see if I can not make people sick. I truck them back over here, and then my other trebuchet and my group of, uh, another group of 18 bowmen. And then on this side, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, starting over here, we've got, this is not a manticore, it's a jabberslith, a razor gore. Uh, in the front there is a batch of five raiders, uh, looks like some redirectors. And then a big block of gore with BSB and a beast lord. And uh, the level four with death. Beasts, sorry. Uh, next over is another horde of bestigors with the level two, with a level two of beasts. Death, damn. Um, more raiders, more raiders, razor gore, and then, sorry about this, go around the table. Uh, that chariot is the razor gore chariot, and then two regular chariots. Five more raiders, and then another jabber slice. So if somebody's looking to play some leadership hijinks with me, which with Plutonium is a pretty safe bet. So we're gonna roll off for magic, and we'll be right back. All right, so for magic, I, one of my uh, level one damsels rolled hands penetrable pelt, impenetrable pelt. The other one rolled uh, transformation, and I don't really wanna throw that much dice at for level one, so I took Wissens. And then one of them has the Ruby Ring of Ruins, so there's Fireball. And the Fan Chantress is allowed to take uh, any of the basic rule book lures, which kind of threw me off, but was also interesting at the same time. So, so I decided to go with Light. I'm not sure if that's the best idea or not. I'm sure everybody in the internet will tell me. So I started off with Foss Protection, and then Net of Amantok, which I'm not sure is really gonna work on this list because he got pretty high strength, but that's what he rolled. Barona's Time Warp, which I hope to use to great effect. And then I just took the basic Shem's Burning Days for some more sh So my opponent uh, bought somebody off and ended up with Purple Sun, Spirit Leech, Curse of Anra here, Wissens, which I expected. We got the Savage Beast too. Savage Beast and the Amber Sun. All right, folks, end of turn one, very uneventful. Uh, the Fan Chancellor allows the Bretonians the option to go first, which I did, which in hindsight probably wasn't the best move because of the Sandstorm rule, I couldn't shoot with much. So what he did was he scouted up some Harpies, and the magic phase rolled a seven, and I got an extra because of her Toad Familiar rule, and all I managed to get off, partly because of range and spells, was I netted the Harpies. Shooting was uneventful. One of the trebuchets uh, took a pot shot at his Jabber Slife and missed. The other one was out of range. Uh, I moved the questing knights over to intercept the harpies before they screw up my trebuchet. Nothing moved up. I'm going to play the he has to come to me game. Oh, we didn't check to see if that is uh, what kind of water that is. But uh, unfortunately for my opponent, uh, he did suffer some uh, weaknesses. You'll see a hole over here. Uh, he suffered some damage from the Dying of Thirst. So I think his Razor Gore over here went down. Uh, he lost a number of Raiders there. Did you lose some Raiders over here? Yeah, he lost some Raiders over here. And I think that was it. And all I did was lose a wound off of one of my Pegasi. Pegasus Knights, whatever. And so that's really it. So now on to Beastmen turn two. All right, end of Beastmen turn one, not turn two, like I said previously. So in terms of movement, he moved his Jabber Slith up here and did his Aura of Madness and nothing happened within 12 inches. And then he moved this Jabber Slith up here and nothing happened within 12 inches. He's just out of range of the Bowman, barely. Uh, in terms of the movement, he just kind of shuffled everything, almost every, yeah, everything up. Uh, magic was unfortunate for my opponent, uh, so he, he rolled six dice, I got an extra one and then I channeled one, so it was six versus six, 
and he attempted Curse of Anra here on the black and white uh, knight units and failed to cast. And then he tried Purple Sun right smack dab in the middle with his other mage and failed to cast. So uh, no shooting, of course, no combat. So end of Beastman turn one. All right, end of Bretonia turn two. Not a super eventful turn. I'm not super pleased with how I how it went, but nothing drastic. So, in terms of charges, I charge Jabber Slate over here. You'll notice it's gone. I uh, lost the combat, but then I overran right in front of three chariots, which may not have been the best one. But, uh, so in terms of magic, I ended up getting 11 dice, and he had a fair bit less. But all I managed to get off was, well, her, uh, she used the, the uh, Chalice of Potions and got off the uh, Heaven's Reroll Everything spell. Uh, I got off Fa's Protection on the Errant Knights, thinking that they might get charged by a Razor Gore. And I think that's it. Oh, Fireballed killed off a couple of the Vestigors, not much. So, and then com the shooting was ineffectual, uh, misfired with this trebuchet on them, but it's only can't shoot this turn. Uh, they shot the Jabber Slythe and missed terribly. Uh, these guys over here can't hit anything. And then in combat, uh, I uh, killed the Jabber Slythe, but now I'm going to get this. So, and of return to the All right, end of Beastman turn two. Uh, some eventful stuff. Uh, I keep making mistakes and forgetting that uh, Jabber Slice can fly, but to start off, so he charged over everything and hit the side of my uh, Grail Knights and Fae Enchantress. And in terms of other charges, uh, the uh, previous overrun, I fled and he failed his charges. So there, hopefully we'll re regroup my next turn. Magic, he rolled, I think, an 11 or something. It was pretty high. And he amber speared one of my uh, Knights of the Realm over here. I saved the rest. Mm, I think that was it. I used my silver mirror to try to do a wound on his uh, general. Didn't work. And then he tried to do Wissens on that unit just with his extra dice, and I dispelled it with all of them all set of my dice. So shooting was largely uneventful. He, his raiders tried to take pot shots at things, but didn't manage to do anything. And then the combat here, um, he, we ended up tying combat, and I won by musician, and on an improbable leadership nine roll, he rolled boxcars, which was pretty sweet. And uh, I decided not to pursue, not wanting to pursue off the table, because we went center to center, so he's kind of heading catty corner. He rolled double ones for flame, which is kind of a bummer. Oh, and I'm sorry, uh, the uh, harpies over here charged the war machine. We didn't put it down because it doubled over. Uh, but my mighty peasants, despite suffering a wound, um, managed to stick it out. So they are locked in combat, which basically means it's switch So I don't think I missed anything else. So on to the uh, Bretonia turn. All right, Bretonia turn three. Uh, let's see if we can remember what exactly transpired here. So the Knights Errant right there charged the Raiders. They fled, I believe. And over here, the uh, Pegasus Knights rallied and then went ahead and moved back behind the set for some rear charges. The Knights of the Realm charged the Razor Gore in the forest. I didn't want to leave him in my backfield to flank eventually but I did lose one knight to a dangerous terrain roll. We just rolled for the front three. And, I, uh, I and then looking around, uh, my other Knight of the Realm block and Grail Knights didn't really do much. Uh, nothing really significant there. The questing knights uh, moved around to set up for a flank charge eventually. 
These guys stayed still. In magic, I got uh, Wissens off on Knights of, of the Realm, although I completely forgot to use it in combat, but uh, Razor Grove filled pretty quickly. Uh, Faw's Protection on the Knights Errant, again, to set up in the, for the future against a couple of chariots they're probably going to come rumbling in. Uh, the Fae Enchantress reached into her bag of tricks and pulled out Curse of the Midnight Wind on the Bestigors, which won't really play a major role at all. And then on to the shooting phase. I ended up losing that trebuchet, so it didn't do anything. Those bowmen there took out the last couple of raiders, which is good for them. And then uh, this tribute over here, uh, because of my poor placement, is completely out of range. And the bowman there didn't really do much of anything either. And that is essentially all she wrote for this turn. So uh, everybody else restrained, and so now we are on to Beastmen turn three. All right, bottom of Beastman turn three. In terms of charges, he uh, slammed into, passive leadership test, slammed into both my, or didn't take a leadership test for this scenario, I forget which. Slammed into my errant lance and didn't do a whole lot of damage, but we'll get to that. Uh, actually, there's the damage we did, so that's pretty good. Uh, other charges, he charged his uh, raiders over here into the side of my, uh, one of my uh, Knights of the Realm Lances. And I think that's it for combat for magic. Uh, his uh, unfortunate streak continues. He rolled uh, Snake Eyes. So it didn't get anything off. And shooting was ineffectual. And then we went on to combat. And he did that many wounds. He kind of fluffed it on the impacts a little bit, but did some damage. Um, but I was steadfast and managed to stick. I beat him over here rather easily and reformed out of the woods. Hopefully we did that right. Let us know if it's supposed to be a dangerous terrain test. We read it that it could either be a up to your march, so I just treated it as a move and kind of back that on up out of the woods. Hopefully that's okay. Oh, over here. This was rather unfortunate. Uh, you remember that there used to be a Jabber Slice and some Harpies. He failed his Leadership 9 rally again. Uh, or his leadership test again. Charge went off the table, panicked the harpies, who also went off the table. So I actually feel a little bit bad about this, but uh, I'm not going to say that that doesn't make me feel a little bit about this one. So on to Bretonia turn four. Oh, and we also forgot to do the water test at the last turn, so we're going to do this. All right. Tail end of Bretonia turn three. Uh, not much. Well, I take it back. Not that many charges. We're still kind of holding back and playing chicken. Uh, so they, the questing knights charged the raiders. These guys moved up to block the uh, gore. I had these guys back up a little bit to set up for a later charge and to get out of the way. Uh, for the inevitable next turn charge because these guys failed to restrain after chasing off a couple of raiders and then crushing, ended up crushing them. Uh, these guys did nothing. And this combat over here didn't quite go the way I wanted to. Uh, oh, shooting was ineffective. Somebody popped the Chalice of Dark Rain, so my trebuchet, which is still out of range, couldn't do anything. And neither of my archers moved up. And the other, other movement, I skated these guys around the back, hoping to be out of charge distance from that chariot there. So this combat was the most important. Uh, I ended up winning combat even though I did no wounds, and he did no wounds to me. But the one chariot, the, the, the Razor Gore chariot that was blocking the Vestigors from charging fled, which was kind of a bummer. So that means my Aaron unit's probably gonna get smack in the face so that does set me up for a nice flank charge, possibly next round. And then the only other combat was over here, 
the Raiders reform to the fourth flank. Magic phase didn't really do that much. I picked off a couple. What I really did was try to buff these guys up, and so I got Faz and Wissens on them, which will hopefully be beneficial this round. It's still going to be ugly. And then just picking off uh, with Fireball and Shems a couple of Bestadors or Bestadors. That was... Am I missing anything? That's pretty much it. Yep. So on to Beastman, turn three, bottom turn. All right. Uh, end of Beastman, turn three. You'll see a large gap where the Errant Lance used to be. They just can't stand up to uh, Best Gore and their strength six attacks, even though I did buff them with Wissens and uh, Foz. So they broke, so he, char he charged the best of Gore in there. Uh, he charged his Gore Horde into my Bowman. And I think those were all of his charges. Magic was largely a wash. He was my last Dispel Scroll. Uh, he got Wissens off on that unit. Uh, I think that was essentially it. Shooting was negligible. Uh, he's got two raiders left over here that tried taking pot shots with the questing knights to no effect. Combat, he broke the peasants, unsurprisingly. And he broke the, uh, or, or killed, the, killed the errant knights to a man. So on to Bretonia, turn four. All right, end of Beastman, turn four. And as you can see, there's a few less Beastmen on the board, and it's really because of a uh, killer magic phase. So what did I do initially? I charged the orange, poorly painted block, painted by somebody else, not me, uh, into the Bestigore, and the white block with the BSP into the Bestigore. Uh, over here, I sent in the Grail, Knights, the Questing Knights, and the Pegasus Knights into the Gore Herd, and that was that was the charges. Magic really kind of saved my bacon in this. I got Foz Protection and Pan's Impenetrable Pelt off on the BSBs, the BSB, and then the BSB's unit, and bur bubbled Baroness Time Warp. So everybody got Always Strikes first. Now, rules question. We played it that the mounts got an extra attack and always strikes first as well. I hope we played this because I think it crushed his best to go or hurt. So if we played that wrong, let us know. But we both agreed that, that was how it was done. So over here, I took more of a licking than I thought. And I'm a little worried about this combat because now I'm only strength four or, well, actually the guys in the flank are always gonna be that strength. But obviously the lance is, not quite as strong as it was, so hopefully I can keep some of the guys alive long enough to hold it. Um, Bestigors lost 30 plus models in a charge that did not catch them. And this guy turned to face the lone chariot that could come in. And so now we're going to go on to Beastmen turn four. All right, bottom of turn four, Beastman turn, bottom of turn four, and the Beastman turn four. And there's now a bigger hole in the Bretonian lines. So what happened here was he charged his Razor Gore chariot, uh, which is a elf chariot here, into the rear of the Pegasus Knights. I really needed to break him, uh, break the Gore herd, and I didn't. He will not encourage. So, uh, he is Beast Lord, just, they just did enough wounds and killed the Fae of Enchantress because she had to move up. That uh, on the charge just didn't do enough damage. So uh, he is reformed with lesser ranks. I am facing him here. Those were casualties that he did from an earlier combat that I turned to face, beat his chariot, or he was running away there, and turned to face. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do over here. I may charge the damsel out. We'll see if he rallies or if I need to charge him first. Otherwise, I'll turn these guys around and see what I can try to save here in the middle. Over here, we've got 
um, Bowman, and a dead pile, but in there is also my last trebuchet. So moving on to top of turn five, we'll see how the uh, the water treats us, and uh, I think we're getting close to the end of the game here. We'll get wrapped up one or the other. So, let's see. All right, that was Bretonia, a very quick Bretonian turn five. Apologies for get, it's getting dark. The lighting in here is not the best, but because there's not that much left, it didn't take long. So we remember to do our uh, uh, dying of thirst test. Nobody took any damage. I did something probably not particularly chivalrous, and I charged my one errant knight block with the BSB at his chariot. I don't want to go into his... Uh, or block quite just yet, especially when Wissens is up, so it ran. Uh, I let his, hopefully this guy will run off the table, it's fleeing, and reformed to set up for a charge in the future. Uh, magic, I six diced uh, Fireball with Ruby Ring of Ruin, did not get uh, miscast, did like nine, some kind of crazy high hits, only did one wound and the armor saved it, sucked. Um, over here shooting, I tried with the trebuchet over here on what used to be a uh, chariot, missed, but then the mighty bowman got one through, killed him off. So I think this uh, game's going to go pretty quick now, all he has left is what remains of the gores, and two chariots, both of which are fleeing, and I have two knights of the round blocks, a trebuchet, and some bowmen. So on to East Winter. Okay, top of, well, now bottom of, bottom of turn five, the end of Bretonia's turn. Uh, over here, declared a charge on his Razor Gore Chariot. Razor Gore Chariot uh, beat it in combat, reformed in such a way that uh, I can hopefully give some support a little bit to my other errant knight unit, which is barely hanging on past the leadership six. Uh, Reroll at the end of I took the second reroll. I took a reroll to leadership six. I just can't beat his ranks. Uh, he's got his uh, uh, combatty character in here. So it was kind of a tough choice between overrunning uh, or sticking with it. So I think I'm clear. I'm probably going to lose this other knight, uh, knight of the round block. Uh, that rally, but I think it's going to be a really long charge given the scenario where you get to roll one less die charges and pass leadership tests. So essentially all that's left is this combat here. I think the points are pretty close. I may be down. Uh, and then I've got a trebuchet which can't shoot anything because of 30-inch range and Bowman which I'd be completely ignoring and they actually could have moved this whole thing. So now we are on to the bottom of turn five with the Beastmen. Turns are going by fairly quickly at this point. Top of, or now bottom of, bottom of turn five, the end of Bretonia's turn. Uh, over here, declared a charge on his Razor Gore Chariot. Razor Gore Chariot uh, beat it in combat, reformed in such a way that uh, I can hopefully give some support a little bit to. My other errant knight unit, which is barely hanging on past the leadership six, uh, reroll at the end of, or took the second reroll, or took a reroll to leadership six. I just can't beat his ranks. Uh, he's got his uh, uh, combatty character in here. So it was kind of a tough choice between overrunning sticking with it. So I think I'm clear. I'm probably going to lose this other knight. Uh, knight of the round block. Uh, that rally, I think it's going to be a really long charge given the scenario where you get to roll one less die for charges and pass leadership tests. 
So essentially all that's left is this combat here. I think the points are pretty close. I may be down. Uh, and then I've got a trebuchet, which can't shoot anything because it's in this range, and Bowman, which I'd be completely ignoring the extra kind of move this way. So now we are on to the bottom of turn five with the beast. Turns are going by fairly quickly. Okay, uh, again, apologies for the darkness. This is all that's left. So that was the uh, bottom of turn five Beastman turn. Unfortunately, my Knights of the Realm block broke. He overran. And we think we played it right. I think I played, we played it right. So you flee, you draw a line from center to center of the units, right? And that's uh, where you pursue. It's not necessarily just a straight back toward a particular table. But again, interwebs, tell us if, tell me if I'm wrong. That's what I thought we played. Uh, over here, he made this long bomb charge. It's ridiculous, but he did. And he did a couple of wounds, but I managed to stick. Uh, that triggered in one wound. They'll break it this turn. And um, that's pretty much all that's it, or all that's left. So I've got Bowman, which I've been repeatedly forgetting about. I've got a trebuchet with some uh, wounds nearby. So it's actually a trebuchet, 18 Bowman, and my Knights of the Realm block with my BSB, and that's everything that's left. He's got a unit of Gore with a Wizard and a Beast Lord in it, and then a Chariot. So I think he's probably up on me, but we shall have to see. So, uh, on to Bretonia turn six, last turn. All right, so parting thoughts for this game. Uh, like I said in the... Uh, 3.5 video that I put out. Hopefully you've watched that and hopefully that'll be a bit of a uh, explanation as to why so many things, well, not so many things, why a number of things went wrong in this game. Bat reps are tough. Uh, it's hard enough for me to concentrate on a, a given battle, never mind to remember which turn it is. That's not really an excuse. I think that's just my unfamiliarity with the format. So I definitely need to concentrate a bit more on the details, whether it is the scenario details or what turn I'm on mostly for you the watcher I mean, we knew generally what was going on until you know we went a uh, full turn and a half too long but that was also a function of having to stop the game and then restart it uh, in terms of how i thought i did with the bretonians themselves i felt like i did a uh uh with with the three thousand points that i have i guess i'll start with uh, the big choice that i made for this game and that was taking the fey enchantress she was cool she was fun Definitely not a combat character, but opening up all of the basic rulebook lures to the Bretonians made for some interesting stuff. And I, I think I would exploit that more in the future, but it'd probably have to be at about 3,500 points. I mean, getting light magic, getting Baronas off that one turn, essentially I broke his army that turn. I crushed the Bestigors, which normally just eat my lances for lunch if I don't kill them immediately. Uh, it's it's just not going to end well. I need to break them on the charge. And then doing a ton of damage to his gore herd with his level 4 uh, shaman and the, uh, the beast lord did a ton of damage. That plus 1 attack always strikes first. With, so I had re-rolls. was awesome. Uh, the problem with having her though was at 500 plus points meant that I didn't have any combat characters I didn't have the combat lord with, you know, uh, uh, the always must accept. Um, sorry, I'm uh, blanking out. Always must accept challenges, you know, getting around the rear, nothing with killing blow, nothing else like that. So I would, I think I would take her 3,500 point, 100 points or above because that would allow me more room in the lord choices. Uh, I thought I fought the lances pretty well. Uh, I've did better at kind of waiting. After playing Wars of Chaos, where you just kind of charge everything forward, you have to be a lot more deliberate when it comes to uh, picking your fights. And I thought, except for the uh, Errant Lance going forward a little bit too much, uh, although I had to clear some of those guys out, as soon as I saw the, those two chariots, I knew I was going to get crushed. 
Um, but the but the charges that I set up on both of his blocks, I couldn't have asked for anything more. And to, and to be honest, I, I probably should have broken him. He, uh, I didn't say it in the video, but he needed insane courage to have his uh, gore block stay. I mean, I had him in, I, I charged him in the front, flank, and rear. I took a lot of hits. The questing knights definitely let me down this game, but I've got the models and I wanted to play them. But I, but I got the flank charge, uh, had the rear charge. He was broken and he stuck. And that meant that that gave him another turn. And of course I was strength four or uh, well, I guess strength five with the questing knights, but they didn't, they didn't last in the peg knight. So really had it, he not made a 136 chance of rolling in Satan Courage, I should have broken his army that turn. So I felt like that went well. My, my, my decision to kind of hold back and wait for him to come to me and hopefully attrit him with uh, missile fire uh, was a good one. I, of course, did a terrible job de uh, deploying my trebuchet out on the end there and the bowman. Had that been placed more in a center location, and I remember the scenario, it would have been a... Uh, I think it, I, would have, I would have been able to knock a couple holes in his uh, major uh, combat horde blocks. Uh, also, Bretonia turn seven. Um, you'll note that my lance went down in size. I think it was the orange lance, which I will add I bought off eBay, and so they will all be repainted. Um, yeah, I made a dumb call there. I really pushed hard for Wissens. I felt like I needed it going into. I charged into his gore herd, and their two hand weapons, strength four, just were going to shred my guys. And sending that one lance in by itself. Um, wasn't the best decision, and then I went for the went for Wissens, try to buff them up, and I got the miss. Whoops, had my uh, video cut off there. Uh, apologies. So yeah, so turn seven was a bad call, but the turn shouldn't have anyways. So overall, fun game. Uh, thanks to my opponent for putting up with my stupid rule mistakes, with the uh, the fleeing, um, both I think the jobber slight. Although he did flee twice, he probably would have rallied him the third time had he got straight back. But then more importantly. When he charged through and caught my lance block uh, at the end, shouldn't happen. That's my bad. But uh, fun game. So I apologize for the rules mistakes. Hope you can see through that. Uh, I will try to do better next time. So please comment, rate, subscribe, thumbs up, and hopefully uh, you'll see some more battle reports in the near future. So uh, take it easy, gents, and hopefully some ladies if you're out there, and keep on working.